Alrighty, what's up everybody? My peeps! What's going on my peeps? Peter Joseph here for a Sunday afternoon video right here on the main channel Killer of Demons 669 Thank you all for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this very channel and my other channels which are down below in the description box. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram as always. If you're real, if you're not, you uh, need a life. Seriously, like seriously, you need a life. And also, don't forget to share the video all over the internet. Most importantly, tap and slap that bell. And turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. Because if you do, you're shit out of luck. You're SOL. And you know what that means. <laughs> That's pretty much it. So, like, like the video. Stick that dumb shit up the, the everybody else's ass. Now, leave a comment if you wish. Subscribe to the channels and all that good shit. And we move on. Alright, it is the 1st of, of October. No, uh, excuse me. October the 1st, 2023. We are four weeks away from Halloween. And we're two months away from the greatest month in the world. With the greatest days in the world. December. So Christmas will be here before you know it. So, get ready for that. We're about 12 weeks away, actually. 12 weeks from um, today is, is um, the greatest day in the world. 13, day, 13 weeks till the end, of the end of the year. So, counting down those days, ladies and gentlemen. We're about 50, a little, around, a little over 50 days until the greatest day in the world. It's my birthday, but we all know that, but... So, counting down those weeks, you know, going to get another year older, another year sexier, so. But, we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully, you know, I got some things planned. Hopefully, those plans will not get changed, but we shall see. You know, it's October 1st, before, and then I got two months to, you know, switch plans if I have to. Don't have to worry about that for Thanksgiving, and then, you know. You know, my, my, my plans for my birthday and Christmas and New Year's. Hopefully, I won't have to change. But we'll see what happens with that when we get to December. We're two months away. But in any event, I hope everybody's having a happy Sunday. Nice and warm here in the Northeast, finally. You know, after those three torrential downpour days we had. Flooding everywhere. So, you know, still got puddles on the streets and the sewers. Some, some places are still flooded. So hopefully over the next couple of days, it's going to be nice and warm here in, the, in, the, in New York City. Uh, Mid-70s today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Then it's going to go down to, back down to about 70 on Friday. Might rain a little bit on Friday, which sucks. But it is what it is as we start the second week of that lovely season of fall. And about a month away from turning the clock back. An hour, so uh, right now the it gets dark, dark around seven o'clock. So in about a month from now, it'll get dark, dark around close to six o'clock. So you're coming home from work; it's basically almost dark. So it is what it is. All from November, November the sixth, all the way to actually November the I forget. I think it's, uh, the, the, yeah, November the, November the 5th, actually, is when we turn the clocks back. So, as of November 5th, all the way to March, the sun will go down a little bit earlier, and then as we hit December and January, it's going to start getting, going up a little bit. So, by January, we'll be back to around 6.15, close to 6.30, when the sun officially goes down and it gets completely dark, and then as soon as, uh, March hits, when you turn the clock forward, then it'll get back to around 7, 8, 8 o'clock, almost close to 9 o'clock as we hit the summer. So, got a long way to go. You know, the winter is coming. Not going to be a great winter here in the Northeast, as usual. But we'll get through it. And wherever you may be, if you're in California and you're in Florida, you don't have to worry about that shit unless you're in the mountains of California. If you're in Florida, you don't really have to worry about that. Or you, mostly Florida will probably just get hit with a little bit of rain. 
during, you know, November, December, going into January, February. But it's going to be warm, unless you live in Miami, where it's going to be like 80 degrees almost every day. So. Why do you think I want to get out of this goddamn state? I don't want to be, be here for another goddamn winter. Or two. But pretty soon, I'll be uh, heading to either Ca California or down south. But. You won't know when, and you won't know where, so it is what it is. And that's that. But anyway, uh, hope you're having a great Sunday. Football Sunday, week four in the NFL in the league where they play for pay. Uh, Niners are coming up in a little over a half hour, it's about 45 minutes away. At home against the Arizona Cardinals. Niners look to go 4-0 and on the season. Uh, Brock Purdy looks to go... 9-0, and we're 10-0, and but still. But, uh, we'll see what happens with that. Should be an interesting game. Uh, Debo may or may not play today. I'd rather rest him today. So, if you have him on your fantasy football team, I would rest him. So, it comes back next week. Primetime game. NBC Sunday Night Football against them Cowboys, which is going to be really tough. That's probably the that's probably one of the t one of the big tests for the Niners this this year, especially in Week 13 with the Eagles in that shithole in Philly. So that's coming up in about about a month and a half from now. So we got all that. So got that Jets got Sunday Night Football tonight against Patrick Mahomes and his disc got double check, and the Chiefs. Uh, Taylor Swift will be in the in in the in the building somewhere. And we'll see what happens with that. And the New York Football Giants uh, play the Seacocks tomorrow in Seattle to finish out uh, week four in the NFL. And also today was the final day of the regular season for baseball. So the Mets and Yankees pretty much finishing up the season, trying to at least end it on a high note. Uh, but Buck Showalter has been fired. As Mets manager, he will not come back next year. So the Mets are going to be looking for a new manager as really as of tomorrow. So uh, we'll see if uh, Carlos Beltran can get his reprieve. He was supposed to be the manager about a year or two ago. But they went with Bucky Boy. See what happens with that. Wally Backman just got let go from the Long Island Ducks. See what happens with, with, with him. Um, Don Manningly. Might be an option. I don't think he would be a great option for the Mets, but we'll see. Um, Aaron Boone may be fired from the Yankees. I hope he does, but knowing Brian Cashman and you know, the ego he has and Hal Steinbrenner, that idiot too, they'll probably keep Cashman and then all the Yankee fans will just jump off a bridge, which they rightfully should. But we got that, and um, Gabe Kapler got, got uh, fired by the San Francisco Giants to, uh, a couple of days ago. So the Mets have some options for their next manager. It's 2024, and we'll see what happens with that. But yep, bye bye, the Bucky boy. See you, see you, see you in the future, there, dude. And that's pretty much it. Also, some sad news in the world of baseball. Um, I'm not gonna do a uh, traditional video, uh, cause not very important, but it's important to the Boston Red Sox. Uh. Pitcher Tim Wakefield, who used to throw that knuckleball, great pitcher for the, for the Red Sox. Uh, he passed away today at the age of 57. Uh, he leave, leaves behind a, uh, a uh, what his wife Stacy and uh, and two kids. Um, yeah, really sad day for the Boston Red Sox uh, organization. Tim Wayfield, one of the best, I, I think, one of the best knuckleball pitchers in baseball history. And, you know, gave some big-time home runs to the Yankees and stuff. But he still was a very good pitcher. And my my uh, my prayers and condolences go out to Stacy and his kids, the Wakefield family, um, on this very sad day that they lost Tim Wakefield. So... Like I said, my heart and my my prayers and my condolences to the Wakefield family and to the Boston Red Sox organization on a very sad day 
in Boston Red Sox history. So, we got all that. So, so yep, yeah, so the 2023 season, uh, well, for, at least for the Red Sox, ends on a really sad note with uh, Tim Wakefield's passing and... Uh, I think they, they mentioned it. I think they mentioned it today during the game. Uh, I think they were. I don't know if they were playing at home, but if not, I think at the way they were playing today, they. I, I, I assume they mentioned it and uh, had a moment of silence for Tim Wakefield. I think everybody, every team around the Major League Baseball, uh, had a moment of silence for Tim Wakefield. So, yeah, you know, that's always nice and everything. And I think next year. They'll do something for Tim Wakefield, like uh, they retire his number, or they do like a celebration day, or whatever, for Tim Wakefield. You know, his wife and kids will be there throwing up the first pitch or something like that. But we'll see what happens with that. So, but once again, uh, Tim Wakefield has passed away at the age of fifty-seven. Not an old man, you know. Fifty-seven is not old, but. You know, you never, we never know when we we're going to pass on, but, you know, I always say we don't have that clock like that Nickelback video, that great Nickelback video. Wish we, I wish we all had that, but we don't, because we never know when our time will expire. The only man that knows is the man upstairs. That's God. So when God calls us, whether we be ready or not, we have to go. But hopefully for some of us, including me, uh, the missus, uh, my parents, my, my, my rest of my family, my cousins and everything, uh, Rose's family as well, and to all my friends and fan, friend, that my friends and fans here on YouTube and my friend, my real life friends off YouTube, um, just live life to the fullest, take each day as it comes because we'll never know when our, it'll be our last day, but just take it as it comes and just live it the best way you can. And that's pretty much, pretty much it. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, people like me got a long way to go. I'm 46, about to be 47 in a couple months. You know, hopefully I can, I can, I'm hoping to go and get into my 50s, get into my 60s, and see what happens from there. I know my parents are, you know, up there in age. i um, hoping I have another 10, 20 years left with them, but... You know, when they go, it's going to be very sad for me, and, um, hopefully, you know, hopefully, you know, I can, uh, fulfill their memory and keep them in my thoughts. I know it's going to be hard going day to day, day, you know, thinking about my mom, because she's, like, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, and my dad, you know, but when they pass, you know, it's going to be hard, because now i got to live on my own, you know, without them, and it's going to be hard, but, you know, whoever... I'm with, whether it be with Rosa or whoever I'm with, you know, I can live the rest of my life and wherever I may, may be living and just keep on going and just live, live my life the best way I can. That's what, that's what matters. That's all that matters. You know, I'm, I'm not going to deal with all the bullshit that I have to deal with on a daily basis, whether it be on this garbage festival website or in real life. Just gotta go roll the punches like Van Halen used to sing. And get to what's real and focus on my life and not focus on petty bullshit. So that's pretty much it. But that's what you all you people all you people, including you other people that, that I don't I'm not gonna talk about, but Everybody needs to, like, live their lives. And if you can't live your your lives and you're just wasting it on petty things like YouTube or thinking you're a hot, you're a hot shot and everything, you think you know everything, you're untouchable and this and that, when you're really not, you know, you're going to just go, go year by year, day by day, year by year, wasting time when you could just devote that to something else, devote it to your life. But that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. My philosophy is just take one day at a time and focus on my life um, and focus on my life with the missus, my, my family, 
and my friend, my real life friends, my friends that I've made on here, and that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna worry about petty BS drama. I don't, cause I don't need it anymore in my life. I don't. And YouTube's not my life. My life is my job, the misses, my family, and my friends. YouTube is nothing to me. I just do this for fun. If you think otherwise, then uh, you need your head examined. Simple as that. Let me move on. Alright, we move on. Alright, so really quickly, I want to get to my Ring of Honor TV review. For this past Thursday, September the 28th, 2023, we are emanating from the Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan, same place where uh, Collision was last week. All right, so our commentary team, as always, on Ring of Honor TV, Ian Rick of Boring and the Pesta, Caprice Coleman. All right, so we're back to the weekly shows. Because, uh... It was a little bit, you know, uh, discombobulated, you know, with the tapings every week. So now we're getting, we, every week we're getting a show. So, so that's pretty damn nice. Alright, so we open with the opening sequence, and we start with the Tony Khan Squash Special. We have Josh the Goods Woods taking on a guy named Braden Irving, with an E, not I-R-Ving. Irving, uh, really not, uh, nothing to see here, 75 second suck fest, I mean, Irving, he tried to hit an insecurity and missed badly, and then, basically, Josh Woods beat the crap out of him, and he finishes, finishes him off with the anarchist suplex, which he calls the Tilta Woods, nice name, and he wins, like I said, in 75 seconds. So, match I gave 2.25 out of 5 stars. And we move on. Alright, there we go to my good friend and yours, Prince Nana of the Embassy, the Mogul Embassy, Dancy, 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 Swerve! He's all excited about the Gates of Agony and the Machine, Brian Cage, having separate matches uh, later on because they're ready to be awesome again. Why are you becoming awesome? I'm only awesome! I, Mike, I know, but... I'm reading the copy. It said awesome. I'm sorry. You want me to say something else? Yeah, can you say, like, epic? Well, awesome is more epic than epic. Um. Okay. Bye! Okay. Go, go be awesome in, in, over there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, you can't, you can't be awesome and epic at the same time, but, you know, if you're Mike Awesome, you're awesome all the time. Yeah, that's right! Okay, Mike, go away. Anyway, we move on. Alright, so let's see what happens with the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage, the Mogul Embassy, later on in the show. So I gave that, once again, 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, match number 2, we have Scorpio Sky... Taking on the premier athlete, Tony Nice with Smart Mark Sterling at ringside. It was a pretty decent match. Back and forth they went. Uh, I'm going to abbreviate this because I got a couple more videos to make um, later today. And I'm doing it. I'm going to be doing some during the fucking Dino game. But it is what it is. And that's that. But anyway. Uh, Tony Nice ties up Scorpio in the tree of... Woo! Then some crunches into, into the rib cage. Ow. Then we get a neck snap over the top rope. Ow. Then we're off to some body scissors. We're working on that rib rib cage injury. Then a build a back suplex gets Scorpio out of trouble. A big time clothesline as well. Scorpio then hits sky high for a near fall. Tony Nice kicks him in the head. Ow. For another near fall. They get back up. Tony's grabs a suplex. Followed by the TKO. One, two, three. Tony Nese, the premier athlete, gets the win. I don't know why Scorpio is losing all the time, but it is what it is. So Tony Nese gets the win. Match gave two and a half out of five stars. That's pretty much it. Let me move on with that. Alright, match number three. We have the man that people forgot. That's Gravity. 
That's, uh... Uh, that's, uh, uh... Bandito's brother, Matt Gravity. He takes on Lee Johnson. The man that's banging, uh... Julia Hart, you son of a bitch. Married to her, too, I think. You bastard. Uh, anyway. Uh, that was a pretty decent match. Nothing great. Little, lots of high-flying moves from Gravity. But we get near the end. Gravity fights, uh, fights, fights his way back from a beatdown. Sends Lee Johnson to the floor for a spring forward flippy give it to you. Followed by a top rope arm drag for a, a near fall back in the ring. Then a standing moonsault gets a near fall. But Lee Johnson comes right back with some super kicks. But Gravity comes back with his own super kick. Goes up top, hits a top rope splash. One, two, three, Gravity gets the win. And a match I gave two and a half out of five stars. I like to see him and his brother Bandito in a tag team match whenever Bandito comes back. I think he's injured, but... Oh, he doesn't have his visa. I don't know what it is, but we'll see what happens with that. So, like I said, two and a half out of five stars for that. All right, then we go to the back with the beautiful Lexi Nair, and she has the Outrunners, uh, Magnum and P.I., no, Magnum and the other guy, I forgot his name. Uh, they're not impressed with Action Andretti and Darius Martin, or Martin Andretti. So, probably be a match coming up. Let's we'll see what happens with that. So, I give that 2.25 out of 5 stars. All right, match number four, we go to the women. We have the Minion in Training, Billy Starks, along with the Ring of Honor World Women's Champion, undefeated so far. We don't know when she's going to lose that belt. Pretty soon, though. Uh, she takes on Lady Frost. Uh, that was a pretty good match. Uh, Starks gets back up, hits a Death Valley driver for an air fall. But Lady Frost throws her into in another cartwheel, into an air raid crash. Pretty sick there. Uh, goes for a moonsault and she connects. But Athena, off the, off the distraction, breaks up the pin attempt. And then that distraction led to, you know, referee trying to get Athena out. And uh, Billy Starks hits something like a neutralizer, a la Claudio Castagnoli. One, two, three, and just under seven minutes. Basically seven minutes. Uh, Billy Starks gets to win. And the match gave 2.25 out of five stars. After the match, uh, Athena takes Lady Frost outside, rams her into the barricade, as Billy Stark's like, Please stop! Stop! She, she's already dead! Stop! And then, uh, Athena is uh, about to go for a belt shot, but Billy's like, No, no, no! Takes the belt away, and then, uh, which doesn't really sit well with Athena, and then we see her in it. A post-match interview, uh, basically yelling, yelling at at Billy Star. He says, "I think we need more minion training for you." And Billy's like, "I don't think that was wise." It is what it is. I still think Billy Starks is going to be the one in whatever and one, and she's going to beat Athena and become the new Women of Honor champion or Ring of Honor Women's Champion, whatever you want to call it. Mark my words, I said it a couple months ago. So, we'll see what happens. And we move on. Alright, speaking of Lexi Nair, the other minion in training, she has as her guest, AK-47, Allison K. And we got a shimmer slash shine reunion as she would take on Mercedes Martinez because she wants to end her losing streak. Meaning, Allison wants to end her losing streak. But that match, I am looking forward to it's going to be a banger. I mean, if you haven't seen their matches in Shimmer, you're missing out. They had wars back then. Wars. Some good shit. All right, so I gave that two and a half out of five stars. All right, I believe this is match number five. The Outrunners. Uh, Magnum and Floyd. Not Pink Floyd, but Floyd. Magnum and Floyd taking on Mac Action and Dreddy and Darius Martin. Eh, it was an okay match. Uh, Magnum drops a knee on Andretti, uh, but he breaks up Total Recall. Nice movie, by the way. 
get yourself to Mars, Quaid. That's where I get that line. I hope you enjoyed the ride. You ready for a surprise? <laughs> get your ass to Mars, Quaid. Anyway. Uh, and then we get the hot tag to Darius Martin. Comes back in, cleans house, everything. Then breaks down. All four men in the ring. Floyd is sent outside. And then Action Andretti and Darius Martin hit a double swinging slam. Which finishes off Magnum in under seven minutes. And Action Andretti and Darius Martin get the win. What are you going to do? And that's pretty much it. So the match I gave two and a half out of five stars. And that's pretty much it. We move up. Alright, then we go to the back. Once again, Lexi Nair with her guest, Griff Garrison. Or as I call him, the younger version of Edge. Hey kids, it's the younger version of Edge. Edge might be appearing tonight at uh, WrestleDream. His contract is expired. He can be he's a free agent right now. So I would not be surprised if we see him tonight or on Wednesday night for the Dynamite Fourth Anniversary show. Then again he can be he can appear in Impact. Why, I don't know, but okay. So we'll see what happens with the man called Adam Copeland tonight and um most of this week. That's that. So anyway, Grant Garrison. Uh, he's talking about something with Lexi Nair. And then the beautiful Maria Canellas Bennett and two dimes, Cole Carter, come in. And uh, Griff's like, I, I want to work with you. I'll team with you. You know, blah, blah, blah. I'll team up with Cole Carter. And um, uh, Maria says, uh, I believe we can work something out. So let's let's do it. Like, you know, not like that, but you know, well, anybody. You could think that, but then Mike Bennett will punch you in a wiener. But anyway, so can they coexist? You know, Cole Carter and Griff Garrison. Can they coexist? Maria thinks they could, and then Maria's like, We're gonna do this the right way. Whatever that means, I don't know. So we'll see what happens with that. So I get that two and a half out of five stars. All right, match number six, back to the women with another squash match. We have legit Layla Hirsch taking on, well, the unluckiest woman in in this match. Her name is Lainey Luck. And basically lost in 72 seconds. Uh, Maria Canales Bennett came out to the stage to watch as legit Layla Hirsch whipped this poor girl's ass. Hit a German suplex, locked her in a Fujiwara armbar, tapped out really quick. That's it. So, legit Layla Hirsch gets the win. And that's it. Uh, after the match, Maria leaves. And then there's a segment later on where uh, Layla Hirsch starts yelling at Maria and says that she wants a Ring of Honor women's title match against Athena, which then later on, Athena does accept. So, we're going to get Layla Hirsch versus Athena for the Women's Championship on a future episode of Ring of Honor TV. That's that. Alright, then we go to another interview with Mercedes Martinez Diamante, uh, with Diamante. Basically think, uh, saying uh, they think Allison K must be sick of losing. So, you know, like I said, they, they kind of mention, you know, it's like, oh, you girls are, uh, have a long history and everything. They don't mention Shimmer. They don't mention Shine or anything like that. But it is what it is. And that's it. So I get that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, I think this is match number 7. Shane Taylor of Shane Taylor Productions. He takes on the returning Jimmy Jacobs, the zombie queen, Jimmy Jacobs. We haven't seen this guy in 8 years. His last match was in 2015. Because he was in WWE as an agent, and we all know what happened with that on BTE. When he joined up with the Bucks, you know, with the whole invasion... Which is in the same goddamn arena as as um, I think it was on um, Monday Night Raw this past week. So we got all that. 
But in any case, uh, the match was pretty good. Jimmy Jacobs looked pretty good. But in the end, uh, Shane Taylor hits, Welcome to the land! One, two, three, five and a half minute match. And your winner, Shane Taylor. But, great to see Jimmy Jacobs back in the ring. But, yeah, he ran into a brick wall, basically. Named Shane Taylor, and that's it. So I give that 2.5 out of 5 stars. Alright, I mentioned, uh, Leda Hirsch getting a title shot against Athena. That match will be next week on the program. This coming week. This coming Thursday on the program. So, there you go. Alright, then we go to a six-man tag team match. We have, we have Dalton Castle, the Peacock, and the boys, the Tate Twins, taking on Ren Jones, Trenton Tormenta, and Xavier Walker. Well, we've seen Ren Jones before, so... These other two ham and eggers, I have no idea who they are. But, uh... Look like a basic squash match. It all lasted three and a half minutes. Did I say three and a half minutes? Pretty much. Uh, you know, kind of went a little bit back and forth. But in the end, everything breaks down. All four men in the ring. We get a bangerang into a knee to the back. Ouch. That's a weird finish. Um, and then that finishes off Trenton Tormenta, who got tormented... By Dalton and the boys. So Dalton and the boys get the win. And, um, you know, they're in line for a trios championship match. Whatever that may be. Against the, the Hung Bucks. So, we'll see what happens with that. They're still, you know, rising up the ranks in the trios division. And we'll see what happens with that. They are former uh, trios champions. So, we'll see what happens with Dalton and the boys as we move forward. So, I gave the match 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it. Alright, there we go to Griff Garrison and Cole Carter taking on the infantry of the captain, Sean Dean, and Johnny Bravo. We get that. Uh, can they coexist? Well, really, it, it might need some work as Griff Garrison won't listen to Maria's orders to choke on the floor. Uh, and then Sean Dean gets the hot tag, and then they go berserk. Griff Garrison have to make the save. Uh, they hit, uh, the infantry hit boot camp on Cole Carter. Maria distracts the referee with her tatas and her ass. Can't miss that. And then Trish Adora chases off Maria, which leaves Cole Carter to roll up Sean Dean with a, with a feet, with some feet on the ropes. One, two, three, in seven, seven minutes. Uh, well, Griff Garrison and Cole Carter get the win. But later on, they do an interview, and basically, Griff Garrison says, that's not how we do things, and we don't cheat here. So, I don't know how that's going to go, but anyway, I gave the match 2.25 out of 5 stars. And that's it. We move on. Alright, then we go to the back, we have Ethan Page, all ego Ethan Page, saying if he wins tonight, he's on a roll. And then, um, we see Rohit Raju, formerly of Impact Wrestling. Uh, and uh, Ethan Page's opponent, he comes in and says, you can't spell Rohit without R-O-H. And then Ethan Page is like, I'm going to beat your ass. And we'll see what happens with that. So I gave that 2.25 out of 5 stars. All right, after that, we go to Mercedes Martinez and Allison K in a Shimmer rematch from, like, years ago. Pretty much back and forth, uh, Diamante... This got involved near the end after a mischarge sets up the Cheeky Nando's kick. And then Diamante, Diamante gets involved, hits Allison K in the head. Behind the referee's back. And then Mercedes hits the Fisherman's Buster. One, two, three. Mercedes Martinez does what she did in freaking Shimmer and Shine and beat Allison K. In five and a half minutes, Matchy gave 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that's pretty much it for that. All right, then um, we see Lexi Nair with Billy Starks, who's uh, and Athena. Athena's not happy with what happened earlier in the night. Uh, and then Athena basically uh, uh, says, "Watch me beat up Layla Hirsch next week and retain my belt." So we got that, and we move on. All right, then we go to our next match: the Iron Savages. Bear Bronson and Bear Boulder, they take on the Gates of Agony, Toa, Leoa, and Bishop Juan! I do not Juan! Along with Prince Nana, not dancing as usual. 
It was a pretty eh, match, you know, big beefy men slapping meat in the ring. But in the end, uh, the Gates of Agony hit open the gates on Bear Bronson as uh, Nana stole Jameson's jacked juice. Wonder what's in that. I don't want to know. But anyway, and then Bear Bronson gets gets beat up and he, get, he gets hit with open the gates. So the Gates of Agony continued to get the win. Uh, in under seven minutes match, I gave two and a half out of five stars. That's pretty much it. And uh, we move on. All right, there we go to Rohit Raju versus the All Ego Ethan Page. Pretty much a two and a half minute suck fest. Uh, Rohit, uh, Rohit Raju got a couple moves in, but in the end, uh, we get a big boot, cuts off Raju, um, and then we get a slingshot. Do more kata! Bang! One, two, three. Ethan Page is your winner. And that's pretty much it. So I give that 2.25 out of 5 stars. Then we go to your main... Uh, this is, yeah, this is the main event of the evening. The Machine! Brian Cage taking on Gran Metalik. Prince Nana also at ringside once again. Match was pretty decent. Lots of high flying from Gran Metalik. Brian Cage using, using his, his strength. But getting to the end. And we get a reverse sling blade by Gran Metalik. Then a big rope walk, flippy dibbity doo to the floor, knocks down Brian Cage. And then uh, Brian Cage comes back. Uh, actually, uh, Grand Metallic hits Code Red for a near fall. Uh, then he hits a, he goes for a rope walk swanton splash. It missed. Cage then grabs a sit up power bomb for a near fall. And then it was all she wrote. He picks up Grand Metallic, hits the Jew Claw. One, two, three, and eight minutes. Brian Cage is your winner. And that's pretty much it. Gave the match two and a half out of five stars. And that is it for Ring of Honor Wrestling from this past Thursday night. And that's it. Alright, everybody. That is it for my review. Pretty good show from Ring of Honor. I gave it 6.25 out of 10 stars. Let me know what you guys think of the show down below in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video all over the internet. Follow me on social media, especially tonight. I will be live tweeting for Wrestle Dream over on my Twitter page. And then later tonight, I will be doing my Wrestle Dream review over on my Peter Fucking Joseph channel. So we got that. So I got two more videos to do before we hit the 7 o'clock hour when Zero Hour starts. Because that's uh, actually 6.30. So we got two and a half hours to go before the pre-show. Which I may watch some of it. And then I'm going to watch the main show of course. And then we got that. So we got that. So once again 6.25 out of 10 stars for Ring of Honor TV. And it was a pretty good show. We'll see what happens this coming Thursday night on the program. We got Athena taking on legit Layla Hirsch for the Ring of Honor Women's Championship. And a whole lot more. And that's it. Alright everybody. I'm going to go. The Niners game is about to start. So I'll be live. Live. Uh. I'll be, I won't be locked. I'll be uh, kind of in and out uh, for the, uh, the Niners game. And uh, that's uh, pretty much it for that. All right. So I got to go. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Until next time. If you're not down with that, fuck you, man. And that's it. I'm Peter Joseph signing off. Peace. Bye.